You are so precious to him. He takes care of you like one would take care of the apple of his eye. He's so loving. He's so compassionate. You are his beloved. He loves you with an everlasting love. I want us to turn to the book of Hebrews. And we're going to read the, the faith chapter. You know, the faith chapter is Hebrews chapter 11. And we have quoted verse 9 so many times. But today I just want us to go verse after verse. And draw the wisdom from the Holy Spirit from this chapter. Now this chapter revists the most important events in the history of mankind. It shows us things to do with how God dealt with those who trusted in him. But the first thing the apostle Paul, whom I believe was the author, or is the author of this book, opens up with verse 1. What does he say in verse 1? Let us read verse 1 together. No. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Faith is the substance, the confidence, the realization, the reality of things hoped for. It is the evidence, the proof, of the things that you are, you haven't seen yet, but you are not now so sure that they are happening in your life. So he opens verse 1 by defining to us what faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not yet seen. So if you have faith, you have the evidence. What is your evidence? My evidence is that my faith, my faith, I have faith that I am healed. I still have the symptoms, but I have the evidence that I am healed because I have what? Faith. Faith is the evidence of things not yet seen. It is the substance of things we hope for. That is faith. You don't have to see it in reality to believe. If we see to believe, then there is no need for faith. We need faith because there is no evidence of it in the natural. But faith turns something that has not been made manifest in the natural into reality in your heart. And once it is real in your heart, it is going to be done. Amen. Because faith has the power of pulling things from the invisible into the visible. From the spiritual into the natural. That is what faith does. So faith is so important to each one of us. And we must be very careful. We must appreciate faith. We must go for faith. Verse 2. Look at what he says in verse 2. Let us read verse 2 together. For by it, the ancients obtained a good testimony. So what makes you receive a good testimony from God? Faith. Faith. People like Enoch, people like Abraham, people like Noah, all these heroes of the Bible, the reason why they are celebrated is because they were men and women of what? Faith. So faith makes you obtain a testimony. And it's not just a testimony, but a good testimony, a witness. Verse 3, let's read. By faith we understand the universe was formed by the words of God. So that the things that are seen were, made, were not made of things that are visible. Now, God spoke, let there be the world or the earth. 
and they add words. He spoke things that were not in the natural. Things that were not visible. But he spoke them into existence. And they became. Praise be to God. Amen. He said, let there be the earth. And the earth was there. Let there be the sun. And the sun came into being. Let there be the moon. And the moon came into being. That is how God works. And faith is so powerful in your life. Each one of us needs faith. Each one of us needs to walk in faith. And to do things by faith. Faith will do you great things, dear friends. Now, let, let us read verse 3 once again. By faith we understand the universe was formed by what? By the word of God. So that the things that are seen were not made of things that are visible. Now there is something about faith. I want you to, you know, this morning I want to establish a very powerful principle that you need, you should never forget. Faith will never work where there are no words. If you believe it, you say it. If you believe in it, you speak it out. And that's why the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the sick say, I am healed. Let the poor say, I am rich. That is faith. Faith is never passive. Faith speaks. Amen. You don't, look at this. You walk in your house. You don't have any chair in your house. You don't have a bed in your house. And you speak those things into existence. Now remember this. You are created in the very image and likeness of God. How did he create the earth? By the word. How are you going to to create a bed in your house? How are you going to create a table in your house? How are you going to create a TV in your house? How are you going to create health in your body? By the words you speak. So you cannot tell me you have faith and yet you speak negative things about yourself. Faith speaks what you want. Faith does not spend all the day Talking about the problem. Yeah. Faith speaks to the problem. Now, are you seeing the difference? Yes. Faith doesn't talk about the problem. Faith speaks to the problem. Jesus said, I, I very, very I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and doubt it not in his heart. But believe it that whatsoever things he has said shall come to pass. He will surely have what he said. So you realize that where there is faith, there is speaking. Where there is faith, there, there is declaration. You look at this. The woman with the blood issue. She had faith that Jesus could heal her, right? Yes. And the Bible just says, she said in her heart, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be well. That is it. You cannot tell me that you are faith and you keep quiet. Men of faith speak it. Women of faith speak it. A man of faith speaks it. A man of faith stands and says, my family members will serve the Lord. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. A good father speaks what the word of God says. You don't speak the problem. You don't have to tell God how drunk, I mean, how alcoholic and messy your children are. God wants you to speak the word, the things that you want for your children. Those are the things that God wants to act on. Yes. He already knows that your children are in alcoholism. He already knows that your brothers are, are, are lost in sexual immorality. What he wants you to do now is for you to prophesy those things that you want to happen. Yeah. And those are the things that God is going to do. Amen. What he wants is for you to look onto this mountain that is standing in front of you and tell that mountain you shall 
Go in the name of Jesus, mountain, get thee out of here. Get out of here. You mountain of cancer in my family, go in the name of Jesus. It is your duty to speak. It is your duty to look straight into the face of that mountain of alcoholism, that mountain of violence, that mountain of religion without Christ. You are going to speak to that mountain of religion. Get out of my people. Get out of the way of this family in the name of Jesus. Don't tell us how rigid your family members are. They are not rigid. It is, the, it is the prince of darkness of religion holding them. And how do you let them free? By breaking and attacking the creep of the prince of darkness. And how do you do that? By speaking. If you have faith, say it. If you believe, shout it. You cannot tell me that you have faith and you're keeping quiet. The Bible tells us in Psalms, open your mouth that he may fill you. If you cannot speak it, and then Proverbs tells us, the belly of a man is filled with the product of his what? Mouth. Whatever thing you speak will fill your life. If you speak poverty, if you speak failure, if you walk around just speaking about the family problems and the health challenges, you walk around trying to tell everyone how an orphan you are. How a divorcee you are. You spend all the time explaining how a single mother you are. Who doesn't know that you are a single mother? God knows that you are a single mother. God is not interested in knowing that you are a single mother. God wants you to be successful as a mother and as a parent. And it, it is your duty to do to stand in, in, in your position and raise up a godly offspring. Amen. There are people who really enjoy talking about their problem. You know, my father died. You know, my uncle died. You know, the person who was helping me died. What, what are you gaining in, in doing so? My mother died. What are you gaining in doing so? Is that what you need everybody to know? Is that the most important, valuable thing for people to know that your mother died? For people to know that your father divorced? For people to know that your father married another wife and, and abandoned you? Is that the most important thing? Or the most important thing is that I am the head, not the tail. I am above, not being me. I am the first, not the last. I am blessing everything that I do. But we spend all the time trying to tell people that my mother died. We spend all the time trying to tell people that I was divorced. We spend all the time trying to tell people that so and so betrayed me. How, what are you gaining in all these kinds of things that you are talking about? That is a clear proof that you don't have faith in the miracle working power of God. Because if you talk about rejection, was it Joseph rejected? I'm asking, wasn't Joseph rejected? Was. He was rejected by who? By his own family members. And you are talking about being rejected by a man that you are in a relationship with. Rejected by, by a husband. But Joseph was rejected by his own brothers. You understand that he was lied on. By who? Potiphar's wife. You understand that he was forgotten in the prison by the very person he helped by giving a prophetic interpretation of his dream. He was forgotten. But the man never walked around trying to show people how he was rejected, how he was lied on, how he was forgotten. He believed in the prophetic word of God. I have a question to you, dear friend. Those of you who are watching and those of you that are sitting here. What is ruling your tongue? What are you talking about? Are you talking the problem or are you talking the word of God? Are you speaking the prophecy of the word of God or are you just talking about things you know, talking about the problems. You spend all the time trying to magnify the problem of your family rather than declaring <laughs> the word of God. 
Why are you doing that? Why aren't you speaking the word of God? Let us read that verse 3 again. By faith. Okay, let's go. By, by faith, faith yeah. we understand that the universe was formed by the word of God so that the things that are seen were made of the things that are not visible. That is what happens. Faith is so powerful. And I have told you, where there is faith, there is declaration. When you believe it, you do what? You say it. You say it. If you have pain in your body and you believe that the Lord is healing you, you declare, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. I will not die. I will live to declare the praises of God. You declare the word. You don't declare the problem. But I want, you know, I just feel I should explain this again. There are many of us here seated right before me. And many of us watching on Facebook or or whichever social media platform we are streaming. You spend all the time talking about your problem. It, is ne it was never designed to be so. What are we supposed to do? To speak to the problem, not speak about the problem. What are we supposed to do? Speak to the problem. Turn to the book of Mark, chapter 11, and let's read verse 23. See what Jesus tells you. You are not supposed to be talking about the problem. We are supposed to speak to the problem. And tell the problem, be thou removed from here. Let us read verse, verse what? 23. Let's read. For truly I say to you, that whoever will say to this mountain, whoever will do what? Say. Is it say about this mountain or to? To this mountain. Whoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and will not doubt in his heart but will believe that those things he said will come to pass he will have whatever he says now faith is activated by the words we speak if you want to get out of poverty you speak you change your vocabulary if you want to be healed you change your vocabulary for as long as your vocabulary is just about defeat, about failure, about your problem. In the problem, you will permanently abide. So the design of God is for you to speak to the mountain. Tell the mountain, be removed. In the book of Zechariah, the Bible tells us that the Lord said, Who art thou, O mountain, before who? Zerubbabel. Who art thou? Who are you, mountain? Who are you, mountain? It is, it is important one day that you stand in your house and you are tired of poverty and you say, who are you in this house? Poverty, I want you to tell me, who are you in this house? Who gave you permission in this house? Would you kindly pack up your things and get out in Jesus' name? And you declare from this hour in this house, our Lord fail to educate my children. I will always have money to educate my children. And I will be a blessing. I will send out missionaries. I will, I will give money for missions. I will receive missionaries. I will house missionaries. I am not going to stay in poverty. I am not going to be this past kind of person that depends on handouts. I am not going to live on welfare. I am going to be a blessing to be a blessing. So I am going, going to be so blessed that I can be what? A blessing to others. Amen. I said, I've told you where there is faith, there are words. You cannot say that you have faith and you're speaking negatives. You cannot have, say you have faith and you're speaking, you, you, you have finished college and your main business is talking about how jobs are not available. What will you receive? What will you get? You get the produce of the words you are 
speaking. You declare that now, thank God, who I am now done with my college. I have my degree, my, my first class honors. I will have my second class upper division. I have my diploma. I have my certificate. I have my grade three, my grade two, my grade one. I, I thank God I have finished my training. Now jobs are looking for me. And Lord, I'm not just going to settle for anything. I want to settle for the best job. And the best job is locating me in the name of Jesus. You speak the word. The power of life and death is on the tongue. And the words of faith are spoken by the tongue. Now, remember what I told you the other Sunday? I told you that every human being has faith. The difference is in what and in whom have you put your faith. There are people who believe they are going to die. Even if you believed for them to be alive, they will still do what? Die. Because their faith is in dying. There are people who believe in poverty. They will never, their situation will never change because poverty is what they believe in. And to them, poverty is holiness. This is something that we really need to learn as God's children to really appreciate, to really embrace. We need to understand that our faith must be 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 was what righteous god testifying of his gift and by faith he being dead still speaks this is an amazing thing we are told here that by faith by faith, Abel gave, Abel gave his offering, and that offering was received by God, by faith. And it was so good, because he, he gave his offering by faith. And because he gave his offering by faith, his offering was received by God. His offering was received by God. And he received a witness from God. And that witness declared him righteous before God. This is something, I'm telling you. It is so wonderful for us to do that. Now let's go on. Verse 5. By faith. No, let's finish verse 4. Let's go verse 4, four again. By faith. Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was what? Righteous. God testifying of his gift. And by faith, he being dead, still does what? Speaks. He being dead, still speaks. By faith, he still speaks. He still speaks. That's what happens. This is an amazing thing. By faith he's still speaking. Cain, Cain, uh, Abel is still speaking. Because he was a man of faith. Let's go to verse 5. By faith, By faith Enoch was taken up. So that he would not see death. And was not found. Because God had taken him. Now what took him to heaven? Faith. He believed in God until he was taken up. For before he was taken up, he had this testimony. What was the testimony? That he pleased God. He had this testimony 
that he pleased God by faith. So friends, faith is very important. Faith is what makes you receive a testimony from God. Yes. A witness from God. Yes. God will look at you and say, this is my beloved. Why? Because you do what? You believe in him. You, you, you become the beloved of God because you have faith in him. Oh, this chapter is so nice. Enoch received the approval from God because of his faith. You receive approval from God because of your faith. So work on your faith. Do everything to grow your faith. And how do we grow our faith? We grow our faith by acting on every word of God that we hear. I was speaking to friends the other day in this church and I told them, friends, if you are not acting on and upon the little that you have already been given now, how do you expect more? More for what? If you are not a doer of what you have already received. Men of faith act on the word immediately. If you are a man of faith, you act on what God says. You don't deliver it. No. You work on it right away. That is a man of faith. Let's go on. Verse 6. No. Let's go. No. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, now he just tells you a very clear message. He says, look here my child. You will never ever please God if you don't walk and function in faith. You will never please God. Never. It doesn't matter. You will never ever please God if you don't walk and function in faith. If you are not walking and functioning in faith, forget. You will never please God. God is only pleased by those men and women that believe in him. It doesn't matter what you do. If you are singing, if you are you are, you are running the media department, if you are ushering, if you are everything that you do in the kingdom of God is not coming from faith, your work is useless. For without faith, it is what? Impossible to please God. For everyone that comes to God must, there is no option, must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who Diligently seeking. That is how faith works. You will never succeed, my Nasset. You will never be anything if you don't have faith. Never. Faith is what you and I require for our existence. Otherwise, we will be nothing if we don't have faith. Verse 7. Let's go. By faith. by faith Noah being born. By God of things not yet seen, moved with fear, prepared the ark for the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is according to the faith. Noah acted on what God said. God told him, I'm tired of this world and I'm going to sweep it away. But because you have been a man of faith, you have walked before me in righteousness, I would like to spare your family. Because I'm going to spare your family, I want you to build the ark. And Noah, by faith, did what? Build 
the ark. Amen. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. By faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place that he would later receive as an inheritance, obey. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. You see, you know, faith makes you step out into the unknown. You don't have to know everything to step out. When God tells you to do it, you just do it. You don't have to have all the details. He, what he wants you to do is for you to be obedient. Amen. And he will do great things for you and with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 9. Let's go. By, by, by faith he journeyed in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Verse 10. For he was looking for a city that has foundations, whose builder and maker is who? God. Abraham walked in faith. He was focused. He was just looking into the future with all faith. That is exactly what Abraham was doing. He was a man of faith. He left Ur of the Chaldeans, came to Haran. He, he buried his father there. He moved on, ended Canaan, had to leave Lot. And from there, he moved on until he obtained the promise. Amen? Amen. Amen. By entering the land of promise that God had given him. Friends, faith is what you need. Faith is important. You have seen people in this country and in any other country, when they see you drive, when they see you educate your children, when they see you having a good house, they say those who have. They say what? Those who have. But do you know those who have? Those who have are not the ones driving, but the ones with faith. Because even though you are not driving today, even though you come from poverty, and you don't have shoes even today in this service, I want you to know, your future is not determined by the kind of shoes you are wearing. It is determined by the faith you are holding on to. Amen. Amen. Amen? If you hold on to the faith, and you walk in the faith, you have a future that is bigger and greater than anything else. Amen. And that's what I want each one of you to know. Praise be to God. Amen. That is what is going to change your life. That is what is going to make you a great man or a great woman. It is your faith. Verse 9. Uh, verse, verse, verse 11. Let's read verse 11. Let's read louder. Through faith, even Sarah herself received the strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Now, friends, you know, sometimes we just talk about, oh, Abraham and Sarah finally got a child. But let us face realities. Let us face facts. Sarah is in menopause. Could be, if, let's say, for example, if she was in her 50s, would have given her 50-50 chances of having what? A child. But this is now a woman at age 90. A woman at age 90? You cannot even, you know, the, just even a thought that she could become pregnant and bear a child and even be in position to carry the weight of pregnancy, it is immaterial. But what does the Bible say? Sarah, and what this version says, judged him. Another version says, reckoned him. Another version says, considered him faithful who had done what? Promise. Promised. Now, the one who has promised is faithful. And he's looking for men and women 
who can still hang in on the promises of God. That's what he's looking for. He was looking for men and women who could trust in him. Sarah considered God to be faithful. And Sarah said, God is so faithful, he has got to be believed in. Because he will never leave you, he will never forsake you. And God will never fail those who wait upon him. Never! He will always come through for them. Now, in this service, do we have any of it, any in this service, or those of you who are watching, who feels you are in a situation like that of Sarah? The very chances of you ever succeeding or getting to that point are all gone biologically, naturally, physically. You know, scientifically, everything is like it is impossible. I want you to know this, that all things, not some things, all things are possible with him that believes. Now I also want you to know this, what is impossible with man is what? Possible with God. So what men could not do, God is able to do them. What human beings cannot even fathom, what human beings cannot even comprehend, what human beings cannot even imagine, they are doable, they are real, they are attainable, they are practical with God. Amen. So I came to tell you this morning that very thing you are thinking is impossible. It is hugely possible. Amen. You didn't hear what I said. Amen. That very thing that you think is impossible, it is hugely possible. Amen. Amen. And God is able to make a way where there was no Amen. way. He's a miracle working God. He opens the wombs of the barren. He opens the eyes of the blind. Mm. He raises the poor from the ground, from the dust, and sits them together with the kings, not as beggars dining together with the kings, but as kings together with the kings. Amen. Amen. Friends, if there is anything that I would really request of you, is kindly, I plead with you by the masses of God, Put your faith in God. If you put your faith in God like Sarah, let us read that verse again, verse, verse 11. Let us read it. Through faith, even Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past age because she considered him faithful who had promised. I'm tired of sitting around believers who say such a things like this. I don't know why God is not hearing my prayers. God no longer answers my prayers. I don't know why God is not responding to my cry. I have been so faithful to God, but he's not doing anything for me. I have been this and I have been that. Stop this nonsense. Yeah. Consider him who has promised faithful, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And he has said, even though you walk through the shadow of the valley of death, he will never leave you. He will always be there to comfort you. Amen. Even when you go through fire, it will not burn you. Even though you go through floods, they will not overpower you. You will go through them. You know, faith is not faith if we are not going through challenges. Yes. So if you think you want to be a man of faith and you don't want challenges, mm. quit being a man of faith. Don't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> don't you ever think about faith if you are not ready to go through what? Challenges. challenges. That's why the apostle 
James says, count it pure joy when you go through various trials. For the testing of your faith produces what? Patience. And when patience has grown, you become perfect and mature. Yes. How many of you want to become mature and perfect? And so go through some fire. It will help you. Yes. It will help you. Verse 12. Let's go. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born as many as the stars of the sky, in multitude and in numerical as the sand that is on by the seashore. Now, from one man. You, let me tell you, God doesn't require a whole plan to change the nation. He just requires one. one man. And you know what that one man is? It's you. Yes. You are the one. Amen. Not another person. You are the, the one. Say, I am the one. I am the one. You are the one. You are the one that God wants to use. Yes. He doesn't require millions of people. No. no. He just needed one man. And that man was Abraham. And Abraham had challenges. Could be Abraham had fertility issues. Could be Sarah had fertility issues. But still God said it is through these ones that I will raise up a nation called Israel. Yes. There was no nation called Israel. But, but we only had a, a barren couple. <laughs> you know, God, God can be funny. You know, <laughs> he calls a couple that are what? Barren. And he tells that couple, I will multiply you. How can you tell a barren family that I will multiply you? And you know that even on many occasions, Abraham asked God, now you are blessing me. Who will inherit my wealth? Is it this worker man who works for me called Eliezer? What is the use? What is the use of you giving me all these kinds of things and seeing I have no child? What is the use of you blessing me? What is the use of you multiplying me? And I have no child. God enjoys such. Because you know, in such an impossible situation, he glorifies himself. Today we are mesmerized when we read this scripture that Sarah at age 90, a grandmother at age what? 90. And Abraham at age 100, that they were able to have a child. You know, that cannot even enter the mind. Yeah, excuse me. You don't even try to explain that in a scientific, in a science class. You'll be reckoned a fool. Only a fool can think like that. As, do you think Sarah was wrong when she laughed? You remember when the angel told her, next year, such a time like this, you'll have what? A child. What did she do? She laughed because honestly, Malaika, please, it is not possible. It is not possible. But you know, God, you know the way he says that he chooses those things that are not. The despised things. Those things that did not have a name to ashamed those that had a name. Amen. That is God. Friends, you know, you cannot even understand how God could use someone like Abraham. And you know, he keeps on telling him, uh-huh. When Abraham complained in chapter 16 of the book of, in the book of, of, of the book of Genesis, in verse, in verse 17, God tells him, you just walk before me and be blameless. And you will see it happen. You just walk before me. Just be blameless before me. I'm a miracle working God. That's what he wants. Now, are you aware that when we talk about menopause, when we talk about barrenhood, those are only vocabularies on earth. Yes. Vocabularies made by men. They are not vocabularies where God is. Yes. Because after all, nobody was born with, with children in the womb. It's God who blesses them with children. <laughs> So there is nothing like a barren woman with God. And in fact, that's why he says in, Genesis, in, in, in Isaiah that who has the, that 
the barren woman is having more joy than the woman who are children because the barren woman woman has got so many children coming in from everywhere. Yes. You know, that's how God works. Yeah. You can imagine a barren woman called Sarah. A barren man called Abraham. And God gives them a child when they were at what age? 90 and 100. By faith. Do you know why they got that child? Because he had promised them. Yeah, yes. Remember in, in, uh, in, in Genesis 5, uh, 12 and 13, and, he, and, and even, you know, you go on in 22, he had said, hey, I will multiply you. Your children will be like that, stars of heavens. They will be like sand on the seashore. And he's telling a barren man, God can be funny. You don't have any money. The landlord has told you, you have got to quit. Or tomorrow I'm locking the house and I'll sell you a bed. And God, you, you, you are so disappointed. And he comes and says, and he, he says, hey, how are you rich man? <laughs> and he says, oh my, I can, see, I can see so many hungry people coming to you because you are blessing them. And you have got so many houses where you are housing the strangers. You are a man receiving in strangers from all over the world. God, look, look at this. You remember what uh, Kano Man told us on, uh, on that day? Yes. Kano Man said what? Before you get to your destiny, God had already gone there, seen your destiny, mm -hmm. understood the challenges on the way to your yes. destiny. And after he has walked the way of your destiny, he now comes back to where you are to hold your hand to take you to your destiny. Amen. So there isn't anything that shocks God. If you're having rain issues, it is not news to God. He knows it. And he has already provided for it. You are not going to die because you did not have rain. Amen. If your landlord wants to go with your bed and go and take away your bed and your table, let him take them as soon as yesterday, but you have a great future. Yes. Amen. You miss where you should have shouted a bigger amen. amen. You have a great future. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So you don't have to live your life worried. You don't have to live your life so worried. If your employer is threatening to suck you, let them suck you. But I'm not saying that they are, you know, I'm, not, I'm talking about threatening to suck you just because you are born again or just because you love God or you are not able to go through to, to accept some of their dubious deals or things that they practice in their business, let them suck it. I'm not saying about you misbehaving at your place of work. I'm not in any way trying to promote misbehavior at your place of work. In fact, the Bible tells us, as Christians, if we have been employed, let us work so perfectly that people who employed us will say, what makes you unique? You remember Joseph? Joseph, everything that Joseph laid his hand on, did what? Prosper. He was a workman that never brought loss to his master. That is what we need to be as Christians. But Christians want to be so careless at their places of work and they don't want to be told that they are wrong. When they are told, if they are told that they are wrong, they think someone is attacking them. That is not how we are to train. That's not what we, we that's not how the Lord has trained us. Verse 13. Let's go. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them and embraced them, and confessed that they were foreigners and pilgrims on earth. Things about baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, miracles, these were things that people like Abraham desired to see. So the only thing Abraham did was to believe that they will happen. But Abraham never, never experienced this. Now I want you to know this. There are promises for you fathers, people like Pastor Jack and There are promises that God has made in your life. And some of them 
they will not be fulfilled in your lifetime, but they will be fulfilled in the lives of your children and in the lives of your grandchildren. You must know that. So don't consider God as a liar. If he promised you something and it's not happening, and yet you are walking right before him, it means the timing is different. When, when God speaks to you, when God was blessing Abraham, he was blessing me. He saw me in Abraham because I am a child of Abraham by faith. So when God was blessing Abraham, I was the one receiving the blessing because I was in Abraham. God sees the end before the beginning. So God saw me in Abraham. Abraham never saw me. And I'm his son. You are sons of Abraham. But Abraham never saw you. <laughs> and when God was blessing Abraham, he was blessing you. Amen. Verse 14. Let's go. For those who say such a thing declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And indeed, if they had been thinking of that country from which they came out, they would have an opportunity to return. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. How many of you know that Jesus said, don't, do not be disappointed. Don't, uh, he said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my father's house there are so many what? Mansions. And he says, I am going to prepare a city for you. There is coming a new Jerusalem. Adorned like a bride. Coming from heaven. And friends, when we will go there in the new city of God, Jerusalem, we will be with the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let me tell you something. Pursue the things, but don't you ever forget to pursue the kingdom of God. Amen. The kingdom of God is very important. What will it gain you if you gain this whole world and then lost your soul in everlasting hell? What will you gain? This is something that we need to be so careful about, ladies and gentlemen. We need to walk in the ways of God. We need to practice what God wants us to practice. Verse 17. We read loudly. Let's go. By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son. Abraham was willing to offer his son because he believed in God. You know, when God tells me to take something and give, if God tells me, take this van, this vehicle, and give it to someone, I will gladly do that. I will gladly do that. If God tells me, take this and give to someone, so I will gladly do that. Because one thing that I have come to realize, friends, this is the reality. I was born with none of those things. Mm -hmm. So whatever I have is what God has mm -hmm. given me. And whatever I need tomorrow is what God is going to give me. Will come from God. And you know what? You know, I have grown to the point where you cannot shock me with a million US dollars. You cannot shock me with a billion US dollars. Because if you brought a billion US dollars and put it in these hands of mine, it is not going to be enough to accomplish what I believe God has called me to do. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. That money will not confuse me. It would confuse me because I look at the plans I have. Look at, for example, the Seven Mountain Transformation what? Center that we plan to do. It is millions and it's hundreds of millions. When I consider the missionary work that God wants us to take care of the child. That when, when, you, when we consider the other things that God wants us to do. The many things that God wants us to do. 
when we consider those things, what is that? What is 100 million to us? What is 100 million? What is a billion to us? It is nothing. Because after all, it is not coming to enrich me. When it comes straight away, it goes out. I want money to come. I want money to be. I want to have money so that we put young Kenyans on the aircraft and send them to the nations of the world to go and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We want money to put young people on buses and send them in the villages of Africa with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what we want to do. We want this seven mountain transformation center so that the young people can come in from all over the world. To be, you know, it will be like an incubation area. They come to pray, to seek the face of the Lord, to be soaked in the presence of God, and we release them in the nations of the world to go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So what I mean, you cannot shock me with a million US dollars. You cannot shock me with a million, a billion US dollars. That is just. It is just still going to be too little to do what God wants me to do. So money doesn't have me. It doesn't. You know, there are people who don't have money. It's money who has them. Money that has them. Money controls them. When they think about money, they don't sleep. Let, let me tell you this one thing that will never cause me not to sleep money. Whether I have it or I don't have it, I will never lose sleep because of what? Money. No. It is funny that there are people who, and I will show you this ring of Moja, 1,000 ring is giving him trouble that he cannot sleep. <laughs> 1,000. 1,000 rings or $10 or $20 or $50 or, I mean, excuse me. You're not going to die because you, you lack a thousand shillings today. And you are not a lesser child of God because you didn't have money today. Amen. 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 This is something that you need to understand. This is something that you need to understand and appreciate. Otherwise, it will never be anything to you. Yeah? God wants each one of us to walk before him with great humility. He wants us to walk before him with great understanding. Faith is what we need. You cannot be anything without faith. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Verse 18. Go. Of whom it was said, in Isaac it was seen, will be called. Verse 19. He concluded that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also figuratively received him back. Okay, verse 20. By faith Isaac, blessed Jacob and Isaac and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, did what? Blessed. blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, mentioned, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his what? Bones. Verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because he saw they saw he was a beautiful child. And they were not afraid of king of the king's commandment. Huh. Verse 24. By faith Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to serve a mistreatment with the people of God than to, than to temporarily enjoy the pleasure of See, considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking for the reward. Amen. 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 Verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, 
For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Verse 28. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. Let me tell you something. When God delivers you using a certain method, and someone in the world chooses to use the same method, they will fail. Yes. God has chosen to bless you. Yes. And the blessing of God is without regret. Yes. So you, you don't have to follow another man's way. God has a way for you. Amen. Verse 30. Let's go. By faith. By faith. The walls of Jericho fell down after they were encycled for seven days. By faith, the hallowed Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with this. Verse 3, 2. And what more will I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and also David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith now look at the look at the, the, the blessings of faith we read the blessings of faith from verse 3 let us read them loudly one by one through faith through faith they did what my friends are you reading really, is that the meaning of louder let us, let us read loudly let us go together verse 3 verse 3 who through faith conquered kingdoms. So what is going to conquer kingdoms of darkness? Faith. If you want to conquer the principalities of darkness, you don't conquer them with your English. You don't conquer them with your degree. You don't conquer them with your silver and gold. You conquer them by faith. Number two, work the righteousness. If you want to work the righteousness of God, that righteousness must be birthed in faith. Number three, obtained promises. How are you going to obtain the promises that God made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? My friends, I'm asking you, how are you going to receive the promises that God made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Through faith. God is not going to come with a spoon and feed you with what he said. You must by faith go and obtain the promises of God. So what are these promises? Healing, deliverance, victory, prosperity, walking in all favor. All these promises are yours if you apply faith. Last one, last point in verse 33. By faith, they stopped the mouths of what? Lions. Look at these lions that are surrounding you. Look at these men and women that hate you, that plan evil against you. Don't be worried. Don't be worried. You have a weapon. What is the weapon? Faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. It will stop the mouths of every lion that is trying to, 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 to defy you. God is a miracle working God. Yeah. And he works with men and women of what? Faith. faith. Young men of faith. If you, are, if you don't walk in faith, God is not concerned about you. In verse 3, we, I want you against enjoying to always narrate your problem. There are people who enjoy narrating their problems. You remember that guy at the pool of Bethesda? Mm -hmm. do, do, don't you remember the guy at the pool of Bethesda? Jesus asks him, Jesus the healer asks him, would you like to be healed? What did he do? He went into what? Stories. Stories. You know Jesus, my brothers don't even help me. You know Jesus, my sisters just dumped me. My parents don't care. The question is, would you like to be healed? What is the answer? Yes. yes! Stop explaining. 
You know, the woman with the blood issue didn't explain anything. Yeah. She just waited for the miracle. Mm -hmm. The blind Bartimaeus, Jesus asked, What do you want? What did he say? Lord, I want to see. No explanation. What happened? He, he saw that his eyes were open. So if you, there are many people, many of you mamas, women here, and those of you who are watching, and men, if, if you, you go to someone and you need help, but you take all the time to explain the problem, rather than going for the solution. And oftentimes, the, the motivation behind explaining the, 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 the problem is so that we may find human favor. This is not a business of human favor. This is the business of gain, of getting your miracle. And this miracle is born in faith. faith. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Verse 34. Louder, let's go. By faith they quench the power of the fire. Escaped the edge of the sword. From weakness they were made what? Strong. Became valiant in war and turned to fly the foreign what? Armies. By faith you will become valiant in war. You will fight battles and you will have victory. You will never be defeated. Verse 30, verse 35. Who women received their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance so that they might obtain a better what? Resurrection. Verse 6. And others had trials of mockings and scourgings, yes, also of bones and imprisonment. By faith they accepted everything. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Men of whom the world was not worthy. You know, men of faith, this world is nothing to them. Because they look for a better city, a city of God coming from heaven. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and dens and caves of the earth. And all this, now let us read verse 39 together. And all this, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided some better things for us, so that they, they apart from us, would not be made perfect. Friends, one thing that I do know is that there are so many things God has spoken in my life concerning this ministry, concerning what, where we are going. And I have just been sitting down and just talking to God. And one of the things that I do know is that God has in store, has a lot in store for us. And that's why he is calling on each one of us to walk and live in faith. Faith is going to help us a great deal. Yeah. I'm telling you. We need to grow in the faith. We need to increase our faith. And this is very simple. By hearing the word of God and hearkening to the word of God. Father in Jesus name we thank you. Give you praise for walking us through the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews in which you have revealed to us the depths and the importance of faith, that Lord, where there is faith, there is declaration. We speak those things that are not as though they are. And so, Lord, we just magnify and praise you and glorify you. Bless this congregation. Bless each one of us. Let the glory and the presence of God go with us forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want the praise of the, 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 the instrumentalists and it could be two or three, four members of the praise team to come in front, to come forward. And then what we want to do is, just as they sing a bit, I want us to have a session 
of declaration. Okay? Uh, is this of what? Let the weak say, I am. Strong. Let the sick say, I am. Yes. The sick say, I am. Yes. I'm healed. And those, those are the things that I want us to see. I want to see now. And that is going to help us a great deal. Yeah? Tumejifunza ya kwamba mwenye imani imani yake inadhihirishwa kwa maneno anayenena. Mungu alipotaka alipokuwa na imani ya kujenga inji, alifanya namna gani? Alinena. I want you to speak miracles. The places where you have need. I want you to speak solutions. Speak healing to your condition as the praise and worship when I lead us in some wonderful worship.
Hallelujah. 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 H